from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass at VCU once more on the 25th of October to spread the message of freedom. So, if you enjoy this content, please share and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you guys at the Victory Party. Take good care. That's the hidden bias behind this government. Behind the matrix. This organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, and that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus the plurality of non violent solutions that you and I, and my friend here, already share. So, what are your thoughts on that? That's what, I mean, that's a, it's very eye opening. I mean, I think that's a, that's a good way to think of it. What? That's a girl! I mean, we, think that, we never really know where our money is. Yeah, you don't really have, like, like in, in a way, like, you know, like, you pay your 18 T, but you know where that's going, right? Right. You know, when you go to, like, Kroger or something, you know, you're allocating your resources, you know exactly where that's going. You look like maybe on Consumer Reports, see who's providing the best product, uh, you know, you can compare prices, uh, but you, you don't have the freedom to do that. Government so that's what government has. The services that we want, they monopolize. Right? So like uh, security, they monopolize courts, judges, uh, roads, uh, post uh, first class mail, right? You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even then have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services, to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Right? So is it more of a... You're just against what governments become today or in general? All right, good point. All right, so I guess I'm going to straight to the point here. Is that, so this moral tradition that you and I and my friend here already share, that's, I guess, using violence, initiation of violence to solve problems, that's called the non-aggression principle, right? So you universalize that principle to everyone, right? No matter, aside the circles to whoever you are, whatever title you call yourself, whatever costume you wear, blue or green, whatever uh, you know, piece of metal you hold up. To initiate that force, to initiate that violence, right? Without provocation, right? So it's much like you universalize the theory of gravity or thermodynamics, you apply this universally all over the world. Right? Right. And so then you look at what government does, it, it violates that to begin with. You know, it violates that, that principle. It initiates that violence, right? Mm -hmm. Even if uh, like a lot of uh, like victimless crimes, for example, right? Uh, so that's so that's the point. You, you take and universalize, and you realize that you really don't need a government. Everything just becomes consensual and voluntary. So, like, for example, government also has a monopoly in law, right? right. So they don't allow a polycentric legal system. They don't allow rich, diverse communities that could come together and negotiate, and pretty much you can have, like, an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right? You can still have rules. You can still have consent. You can still have uh, all these services that government has monopolized, but offered in a free market. Mm -hmm. Right? Very, like, Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight, but then, uh, you know, people are like, oh, forget that, cancel or subscribe, go to Hulu. Right. So in a free market, then you have the power the consumer has to talk. Right? If a business oversteps their boundaries, they could go bankrupt. Right? No but a government can't no go subsidies. bankrupt. Yeah. Like USPS, six billion dollars in debt. Uh, Social Security, you never, you never gave consent for that. Uh, but before you were born, you're forced to have that service. You're forced to pay for it. And when it's time for you to retire, you'll never have that. Right? Oh yeah. I mean. Money itself is monopolized as well, and I think yeah. that's what we forget: is where does the money come from? Yeah. What is it based on? Right. Nothing. Yeah. It's based on debt to the same organization that created it. It's like it only has value because we believe it does. Right. right. I print a bunch of pieces of paper and say, "Here, I'm going to loan this to you," and then I say, "Pay me back the pieces of paper I made up plus 10 percent more." And then how do they do that? They borrow more money from me to pay me back the money they already borrowed from me. And it just is this spiral that never ends, and it never can end, because it's based on this like hole of debt. So I mean, yeah, that's another thing that government monopolizes also currency. And it's like money is like another commodity, like a book, a paper clip, or a card. Except this is a coarse commodity, the only commodity for a lot of trading. Uh, and they did that in 1913, creating the Fed. So like a few years ago, there was a guy who tried to compete against this monopoly, uh, creating the Liberty Dollar. But of course, you can't compete against a monopoly. So the IRS came in, seized all his assets, and threw him in a cave. Yeah, it was silver-based, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like Bernard von Nothaus. Yeah, <laughs> he had an interesting, yeah, von house. Yeah. yeah. He's a waiting sentence right now. I think he yeah. might get like 20 years just wow. for trying They're to compete. produce a currency. Yeah. So that's, that's what we mean. So that's, that's what we're trying to go. Let's turn to our community and turn away from government, right? Uh, in our day to the life, we don't use violence to solve problems. So let's, let's continue with that in this first principle, right? Uh, use our real voice. Everyone wants to say your voice is a piece of paper, a chat is delivered. They're afraid to be actually use your real voice. We can actually interact. We can find out that we share these fundamental values against violence and that we realize that if we talk to each other, we never needed government to begin with.
I've got Pampas too. Oh, oh sure. I think she's getting cold. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, My name is Cal, by the way. I'm Logan. Logan, pleasure to meet you. I appreciate it. Wait. Nice to meet you. Yeah, appreciate man. it. You're giving me some interesting things to think about. Of course, man. Take good care. Thank you. And at the same time, government is even found into more violence. Like, there's no point you say, if you want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war, right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give me your money. You still have to give up the property. You still have to pay your taxes, right? So, if you did, so, that, so that's if you didn't have a freedom of economic choice, though, the government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage exactly. if you didn't pay your taxes, right? So that's the head advice behind the government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way. Yes. And Just that is through the threat of and use of yes, violence. Mm -hmm. Versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions, though, that you and I and my friend here, Blake, <laughs> already share. Yeah, right, right. So, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I totally agree with yeah. you. Um, me and my friends always talk about stuff like that. Yeah? <laughs> nice, what kind of stuff? We're, we're considered conspiracy theorists. Yeah. <laughs> no, cool, cool. But usually, you're just open minded. Yeah, but yeah. basically, the, the government is a conspiracy. Right, it is, it is. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I love it. Like, I totally agree yeah? with everything about that. Nice. All right, so yeah. um, so this is more prediction then. I'm sorry, that, that we already share against using violence to solve problems against the initiation of violence. Mm -hmm. That's called the non aggressive principle. Right. right? Universalize that principle to anyone. No matter what title you claim, no matter what costume or blue or green you wear, or pieces of metal you hold in the air, it's wrong for anyone to initiate that violence, exactly. right? Now, you don't, I don't care if you call yourself a president or a janitor or a cop or I don't care, it's wrong for any human being to do it, right? right. Uh, so that's what government does, violates that to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. And politicians do that by trying to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body, but you can't right. tell the same politician the exactly. same thing, right? So yeah, so that's and that's pretty much it. Um, trying to get to a free and voluntary society without government, exactly. Right? That would be based on consent, heavy, right? based on agreements. Yeah. Alright, cool. My name is Chow. I'm a Sokin. A Sokin. Pleasure yeah. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Yes, is there like a group or something yes, you guys Yes, do? it's a non-political group. Uh, we talk about a lot about uh, peaceful parenting, knowledge, and agreements, and experiences. Yeah! <laughs> sounds good! I'm sorry, what exactly are you, are you advocating for? Uh, free and voluntary society. Free uh, and voluntary society. Yes, and how is that achievable? Through, I, I sense that, you know, and I'm all for peaceful movements, yeah, 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 yeah. um, non-use of military. But can you give me the fundamentals of the right, aspects so the, of that? So the fundamentals is what government is objectively. Yeah. They have a monopoly on the services we already want. Yeah. I want roads, security, first class mail, I want currency, I want I want wealth. But government has monopolized those services. Government has a monopoly on law, of course, judges, roads, all these things. I don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom then to compete against those monopolized services and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. And that's really where you break it down, that's all it is, right? Allow me to provide a better form of security. Allow me to provide a better form of delivering pieces of paper. And you know? how is it possible to provide a better form of security? How, how can you be sure that uh, by privatizing these right. things that's going to be, you know, efficiently allocated? Okay, uh, it, it, all right, so what ends up happening in the monopoly? Um, the cost always goes up yeah. and, the, and yeah. the quality depreciates. And that's yeah. why uh, you'll never have to security in your life, right? That's a forced service you never agreed to, but you're still forced to pay for. Mm -hmm. uh, so you never even gave consent or agreement. And a lot of government services are like that. That's why, uh, you know, USPS, the post office, is $60 billion in debt. Uh, just a lot of unfunded liabilities that leads to bankruptcy, like in Detroit. But the opposite of that in a free market, it's uh, the cost always goes down and quality always continues to improve. Like a couple years ago, plasma screen TVs were like thousands of dollars. Yeah. Today I could buy a better version for like a few hundred bucks. Yeah. So freedom of competition means, well, you know what, I could do better than her, better quality, go with me instead. Right? Okay. So that's that's where the guarantee and security comes from. Like yeah. uh, with any kind of good service, you know? Yeah. Like I may not be able to afford an iPhone 5, now I could get an iPhone 2. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, reasonable. So, um, so what else does your group advocate for in that sense? Like I, I hear you, uh, I'm assuming you're just trying to attract people to join. Um, uh, well, we've been doing this for a good year now. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a growing non-political organization trying to turn to a community, turning away from government, and trying to yeah. find non-violent solutions to answer these problems to help each other out. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we also advocate for, aside from free markets, is peaceful parenting as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, you just can't be against state violence, right? You have to yeah. universalize the principle. And then want to whip your kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So 
<laughs> so we're also against uh, you know, like spanking children, for example. All it teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems yeah. in this world. Uh, leads to criminality, addiction, all, all, a lot of these problems. Uh, so it's trying to start off on first principles, trying to get to, trying to talk to each other. We talk. Yeah, uh, communication is key. Yeah, and yeah. I completely agree. Um, now, do you? What am I trying to ask here? So, how, how, what do you make of the? other majority of people who don't follow the same mindset you're you know you're trying to appeal to all crowds and i completely understand um i follow a similar mindset as well but what if you were to you know leave all of these things up to the free market get rid of the government potentially um where would the security come in from if you have say even the group has grown uh, to a majority of people being open-minded as you mentioned yeah. um, and just being fully accepting of peace but you still have those others who yeah. could potentially revolt against that and just uh, still utilize violence for their self-interest, gain power. Uh, who would come in and, and help in that sense if there is no government, if there is no military, which I believe that, you know. You can still have self-defense though. Okay. Yeah, okay, you can okay. still have security. Self-defense. Okay, yeah, you I can see. still have that. You can still have dispute resolution organizations, but then you have like thousands you can choose from, right? A lot of them trying to offer the best service. So you, okay. Instead of having one country now, you have like thousands of different communities catering yeah. to your preference. You so it's so it's in a sense the free market is providing proportional representation as yeah. well as the government. Yeah. That's cool. In the yeah. that. territorial yeah. Yeah. That was like, great. We, she we just interviews you really good. <laughs> yeah, people it's like yeah, the customers can choose too. whatever place, whatever organization they want to be defended by. Yeah. And it isn't dependent on somebody's arbitrary orders that they right. So how do you advocate for that with such strong sovereignty? Right, right. Right. <laughs> because this is what I'm right, trying right, to do. Right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, Alright, so you start off locally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change says it started in the White House in D.C. and countries you've never been for. It starts with ourselves at yeah. home in our own community. And that's, that's why I started here in Richmond. Uh, so we grew up, we grew up here, right? Uh, there's like last year, Detroit, 47 percent of all homeowners just stopped paying the property taxes. Stopped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it became too unsustainable, they start to collapse. Yeah. So the thing is, if we can unite ourselves, just several thousand of us, that's enough to put some momentum. And then we can all say, no more, we're done. Right? Then we can reclaim our lives. Then we can have a free voluntary society. Because the thing is, all this information is the complete opposite mm -hmm. of what government wants people to know. Mm -hmm. Right? No, I, I agree. Uh, so we have the momentum. We can protect each other's homes. Yeah. Right? We, we, uh, by, by that time, this, this information will be all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so we're part of our Liberate RVA. Liberate our okay. community from the idea that violence will set us free. Uh, and this chapter is already spread to other cities. There's one in it Missouri. It started here, you said? Yeah, it started here. Uh, wow. So it spread to like Missouri. There's one in New York. There's one in Australia. What's your... How have you been, um, like, what kind of reactions have you been getting? Good, good to yeah. <laughs> This is like, the first like, time I've been here, and every person that's come up has been positive. I haven't heard anybody, like, attack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the roads and the government? You know, it's Granted, like, you have a very liberal society here, especially in Richmond or, or at VCU, so I find that to be very beneficial. Right. Mm -hmm. Students tend to not be as close-minded about new ideas. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good place to do outreach, for sure. Right? I agree. So I run a YouTube series, I have like many videos of talking to a lot of people. So eventually it comes to the point where it's like, well, I, I agree that I'm a moral agent, we're moral people, mm -hmm. but about everyone else? It's like, well, here's a collection of, uh, I guess, interviews I've had with like over 100 people. 100 people agreeing that I'm a moral agent, you know? Yeah. Maybe next year there's a thousand people now, you know? How much more evidence do you need to, to, to see that if we actually reach out and talk to each other, we understand we share these moral values against yeah. violence. And having, being united with these values, uh, that's, that's the best form of self-defense yeah. against any one would-be aggression. So, uh, let me ask you in regards to that, if you're advocating, you have such a huge group of people advocating, you have uh, private you know, defense mechanisms and everything, but what if you still have a, a certain huge world power, say Russia goes back to its old ways, or anything like that really, and somebody wants to step in and invade our borders? Right. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what kind of solutions would you maybe think of in that sense? All right. If we're advocating for a non-violent yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of All right. thing. Hey, that's, that's a great question. Great question. Okay, so one thing you have to understand, I guess, with uh, governments, the only reason governments want to take over other governments is to take over the taxes. 
That's why Hitler wanted to take over France so fast to take over the tax system, because then it keeps funding this war machine. It, it funds standing armies. You know, without taxes, you have no armies. Mm -hmm. You can still have dispense cover about businesses, but you can't really have like, uh, like Blackwater. Blackwater is funded through government grants, or it's funded through taxes. It's too expensive to maintain such a large force with, yeah. in a market mechanism. I mean, yeah. how are you going to pay for all of that? So aside yeah. from the incentive that there's no tax system to take over, uh, Russia is not is not just facing uh, the U.S. of A. It's dissolved now into hundreds of thousands of communities with hundreds of thousands of defense organizations. Right? So you're going, you're going against like a lot of different, awesome different ways people are wanting to. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot yeah, to go so through. Yeah. So ultimately, potentially more stronger than a, just a regular military. Right. And now, what about certain organizations such as uh, I don't know what you make of you know like the United Nations or, or things of that nature? Would you still find the community this? Interaction, communicating with others. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, these, these ideas permeate uh, goes beyond boundaries. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, all, all boundaries. Well, a country is just an arbitrary line on a piece of paper. So these ideas are permeate. But again, you know, the most we can do is put the spotlight in our own city. Yeah. To show how free we can be, and we allow all the people to enact on their own courage to yeah. kind of achieve that and grasp that into their own nations. Yeah. And we'll still help each other out. We'll still uh, try to help them understand. Um, and the best way, well, I guess envy is a great way to show. Look how much fun we're having. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right? you, you can have in a community that's work funny friendly, one across the street that's not perfectly fine, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's a lot of that envy will come. It's like, wow, they're having so much success. Like, I'm getting ready to let go of my own government too, right? So ultimately, sustainability. Yeah. Uh, we hold like monthly freedom gatherings, uh, starts off at the potluck, uh, and then philosophical discussions or a workshop. Uh, we're having one next month on Bitcoin, uh, digital <laughs> currency. Have you heard of it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting how that comes into play with just the exchange rates as right? well. Yeah, <laughs> huge influence. Yeah, so we have, uh, we have a lot of monthly events. Uh, we also host it at a nightclub too. Mm -hmm. Nightclubs come to support us, uh, Fallout and Shaka Bottom. Okay. Uh, so the next one, and that one will be December. So yeah, we do a lot of gather we're getting ready to do maybe some craft nights. Um, okay. Clinton is supposed to be visiting. The, so I'm probably my cover with my yeah. sign. So a lot of outreach <laughs> activism. A lot of uh, we have a reason started. I guess our local peaceful parenting group here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, Liberate our base is mostly an um, umbrella term. Underneath it, there's a lot of different organizations and activities. Okay, so you would consider Liberate RBA your organization. Um, are you guys a nonprofit? Or uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, it's a non political, it's an organization of individuals. A lot of okay. us have, like, uh, yeah. different businesses and stuff like that, but united under the non aggression principle. Yeah. Right. Can I get some of your information? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I would love some. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My name is Cal. Cal, Nadia. Nadia, pleasure nice to meet you. Blake, Blake nice to meet you. Are you part as well, or are you just I just met in? him today. I actually okay. saw him at a grocery store. Yeah. At one point <laughs> yeah, you seem very familiar. I'm sure I've seen you roaming around, but probably just through wandering. <laughs> that neighborhood watch with the brim hat. Right? <laughs> That's you. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm usually out here every day. Uh, okay. so yeah, more questions. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I'm glad because uh, if there's anything, I'm a political science student, nice, so this nice, is nice. extremely interesting to me, and I study economics as well. So, just the way that the whole system works, I think it's, um, you know, not to to sound nice, but not really. It's just extremely corrupt, and the consolidation of power is obviously uneven. Right. But it seems to me as if society here is very blind to the things that actually go on because of, you know everything that you're targeted for, especially materialism, and so things like this don't typically come up, and, and I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Thank it, you. it definitely has to start with the masses. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and for me, I'm, I'm going to start here in Richmond. Yeah, good, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'll course, keep up with you guys. Nice to meet you. Take care.